Developing tonight, he is from a county that has only two stoplights, and he was the first NFL player ever from his hometown. But now ex-NFL and former Michigan State football star Keith Mumphrey is in the fight of his life. This Me Too target says he is innocent. He's just filed a lawsuit against his college. The former Texans wide receiver was cut from the team two days after the Detroit, Detroit Free Press broke this story. He was never charged with any crime. He is here exclusively for the first time on television to tell his side of the story in moments. But first, Trace Gallagher gives us the backstory. Trace. Martha, both sides agree that on March 17, 2015, the woman in this case invited Keith Mumphrey back to her Michigan State dorm room. And there are text messages and a picture indicating that, at the very least, the atmosphere was flirtatious. But the woman claims she was drunk and unable to give consent. Mumphrey says she was not intoxicated. And surveillance video shows at the time she was walking with a, quote, steady gait and had no trouble keeping her balance. Keith Mumphrey claims the woman opposed him using a condom and they did not have sex. The woman claimed she was sexually assaulted and filed a claim with campus police the next day. Now remember, Michigan State follows the so-called Dear Colleague guidelines issued during the Obama administration. So instead of using the legal guilt standard of beyond a reasonable doubt, the university threshold is more likely than not. And under the Dear Colleague policy, the accused is not allowed to question the accuser. And yet despite that, after months of of investigating, the university found that Mumphrey did not violate the school's sexual misconduct policy. Even the county prosecutor decided not to file charges, citing a lack of evidence and a lack of cooperation by the accuser. But unlike a court of law where a not guilty verdict cannot be retried, Title IX investigations do allow double jeopardy. So the woman appeals Mumphrey's acquittal and Michigan State reopens the case. But Keith Mumphrey is now playing for the Houston Texans and the notification by the school is sent to an old email account so he doesn't know the case is back open and does not offer a defense and in March of 2017 the university finds him responsible for sexual misconduct he's then cut by the Texans cannot get a tryout with any other team and because he's banned from Michigan State he can't finish his graduate degree Mumphrey has now filed a lawsuit against Michigan State alleging the university has left him with no viable job prospects among other things, we reached out to MSU for a comment. So far, no response. Martha. Trace, thank you very much. Here now, former Michigan State and ex-NFL player Keith Mumphrey and his attorney, Andrew Miltonberg. Um, Keith, thank you for being here tonight. It's good to have you with us. Uh, I'm going to ask you the, the tough question first. Did you sexually assault this woman? Uh, no, ma'am. What happened that night? Uh, she invited me over to her room. Uh, I, met, I actually met her through Tinder. Uh, she invited me over to her room. She sent me a few pictures. Uh, we talked, and uh, she told me she wanted me to come over when her roommates leave. So I came over. Uh, roommates left. It was just me and her there. Uh, as soon as I got in there, she started undressing. So she basically made it known, you know, what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, to, uh, fast forward a little bit, uh, we got to a situation, and the situation was about the condom. I told her that I did not have sex without a condom. So that's when she flipped and everything just went south. So I uh, basically, you know, told her like, hey, uh, it's time for me to leave. Um, I don't have time for this. I basically said, uh, I'm an athlete, I'm black and you're white. And um, I told her that and um, I left. And that was the end of that. So you never had sexual intercourse with this woman? Uh, no, ma'am, I never did. And no, is it true that you, you say one of your siblings had a baby uh, at a young age and that that's why, that, that's always your policy in terms of birth control? Uh, yes, I don't, want, I don't have any kids. So, I mean, I'm not going to have any kids until I'm married. So yeah. <laughs> that was one of the main reasons. So. All right. So, so you think that all of this is behind you because the school found you're not guilty. The prosecutor dropped the charges after they looked at it and said, you know, there's nothing here. We're not moving forward. So then you go off to begin your life and your dream as a player for the, the Houston Texans. Um, and suddenly you go back to play in a golf tournament at Michigan State. And suddenly someone comes up to you and says, you need to leave the property right now because she appealed your case. And now we've decided you're guilty. What was your reaction? <laughs> I was hurt. Like, my feelings were crushed. And what did you think about your, your future? Because then the, the 
the story comes out in the Detroit Free Press, and then what happens when they call you into the office at the Texans? Uh, you know, basically, uh, they tell me that, you know, article came out, uh, bad press, and uh, we have zero tolerance for this. So, Andrew Miltenberg, uh, does he have a case? Can he turn his life around? Absolutely. I think the NFL uh, should welcome him back and give him an opportunity. He's uh, been the subject of and victim of a terrible injustice, and he's overcome such tremendous hardship and such terrific odds in his life to make it to the pinnacle of, of his of his dreams, all to have it ripped away years after he's left the school by allegations that he was found not responsible for previously. Keith, do you think that race plays any role in this? Um. I would say to a certain extent, uh, yes. You know, because when you look at it, uh, you know, I'm black and um, she's white, and uh, I just feel like, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't have never happened. Like, like it shouldn't have, like the way Michigan State did me, it shouldn't have never happened. And I feel like, uh, I don't know, it, just, it, it, it hurt me. When, it, it just hurts. It, it hurts. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, your life was derailed, and. Um, you know, Andrew, what about the woman in this case? You know, what is she, what is she claiming now? She has not stepped forward um, and she has not talked about it, right? That's correct. And she's claiming some sort of trauma. But what I, I don't want to lose sight of is that I uh, think that after you read uh, this entire narrative, you understand that Michigan State, after years of ignoring uh, tremendous problems. This is the school that Larry Nasser worked at, we should point out. They're in the middle of that mess. With Larry Nasser, uh, in the midst of that, turns around and we believe makes Keith Mumphrey the poster child for how hard they're going to now go after that's unfortunate. this issue. That would be unfortunate if that's the case. Uh, it's in incredible. Uh, thank you. And please keep us posted. Keith, uh, we wish you luck because we know you're trying to get your life back on track and that you would love to play for the NFL. You say that you're, um, you want to be a role model for the kids in your town. You grew up in a very, very rural small town in Georgia, and everybody there looks up to you. Um, and we would love to follow this case, and we'll see where it goes. Thank you for speaking with us, Keith. And, Andrew, thank you for being thank here you tonight. Sir. Thank you both. Found an amazing series of old blog posts that, as far as we can tell, have received basically no media attention. The person who wrote, wrote them looks in retrospect like a prophet calling for America First policies at least a decade before Donald Trump entered politics. In the days after Hurricane Katrina, for example, the blogger in question suggested that native born Americans, not, quote, low paid Mexican workers, ought to rebuild the city of New Orleans. In 2006, the blogger said this about her television viewing habits, quote, I love Lou Dobbs. His show has become required viewing around my house. The blogger largely agreed with Lou Dobbs on immigration. Quote, flying the Mexican flag on U.S. soil strikes me as incredibly presumptuous and insulting to the U.S. The blogger went on to argue that illegal immigrants to this country are not coming here because they embrace our ideals. They're coming for money, which they then send back to Mexico. And she made a pretty clear-headed evidence-based case for that. In a 2005 post, the same blogger attacked Democrat Howard Dean for using racist, anti-white rhetoric in a speech. Quote, tagging the other side, the Republicans, as the party of whitey may sound just like the way to get these minority voters back, but it so misses the point. The blogger later scolded Howard Dean for insulting Christians and white Americans. Who wrote all that? We could give you time to guess, but you'd never guess. Believe it or not, it seems like the author of what I just read was Joy Reid the now totally dogmatic, race-baiting MSNBC weekend host. According to the Internet Archive, Joy Reid apparently posted those views on her now-defunct blog more than a decade ago. She wouldn't do that now. MSNBC would fire her right away for the crime of independent thinking. We repeatedly contacted Joy Reid's lawyer and MSNBC today for comment, and no one responded to us. It's possible that Reid will claim those posts were written by a mysterious hacker. She's claimed that before, the last time she got caught with embarrassing blog posts. Maybe she'll blame the entire thing on Vladimir Putin himself or some nameless Macedonian agent. Or maybe she'll do the unexpected and admit that there was a time before the revolution currently in progress when she was actually kind of smart and reasonable. 